administration announced two new executive orders on gun control Friday, after countless other attempts to erode Second Amendment rights failed to gain public support. Gun confiscation according to one of the proposed actions, patient privacy laws would be pushed aside to allow increased government access to mental health records. Currently required to protect that information, states would now be exempt, instead encouraged to submit a patient's private records into the National Instant Criminal Background Check System NICS. A second proposal from the Department of Justice would clarify who is barred from owning firearms, which would include anyone involuntarily committed to an inpatient or outpatient mental institution. In an attempt to diminish concern, the administration claims that seeking help for mental issues does not prohibit a person from firearm ownership. The proposed rule will not change the fact that seeking help for mental health problems or getting treatment does not make someone legally prohibited from having a firearm, the statement said. Unfortunately, even without the executive orders currently applied, the government has already deceptively used this exact tactic to revoke legitimate gun ownership without due process, an issue that will undoubtedly increase. In 2012, Afghanistan and Iraq veteran Brandon Robb had his firearms confiscated after being involuntarily detained for psychiatric questioning due to Facebook comments on government corruption. According to Robb's lawyer John Whitehead, more than 20 others had recently been detained and declared mentally defective in the same Virginia county as well with thousands more across the country. That same year, David Sardi, best known for his appearance on National Geographic's Doomsday Preppers, was committed to a psychiatric ward and deemed mentally defective after complaining to his doctor about chest pains. Declining to have tubes inserted into his heart by cardiologists, doctors claimed Sardi was suicidal, prompting the FBI to revoke his Second Amendment right. The targeting of veterans specifically is quite clear. A collaborative study from 2007 between the VA Medical Center and the Archives of Internal Medicine claimed that at least one-third of returning veterans were mentally ill. With almost every human emotion now being labeled a mental illness by the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the attack on gun rights through the medical system will only worsen. An amendment in a 2012 defense bill spearheaded by Democratic Senator Charles Schumer attempted to collect the names of veterans deemed too mentally incompetent to handle their finances. The list would then admittedly be handed over to the NICS, removing the gun rights of all listed veterans without due process. Just last year, countless veterans began receiving a letter from the Veterans Administration warning that their mental health was suddenly under review. The letter continued by saying that the right to own weapons would be removed if bureaucrats deem them incompetent outside of law. Given the Obama administration's view toward returning military, the assault on veterans is unsurprising. In fact, a 2009 Homeland Security report labeled returning veterans as likely domestic terrorists. Despite the outrageous claim, former DHS Chief Janet Napolitano defended the report. Incredibly, the DHS announced that Boy Scout explorers were being trained to kill disgruntled Iraq war veterans in a New York Times piece only one month later. Despite the endless denials of gun confiscation, California residents were greeted by Justice Department agents last year as the state expanded its confiscation program. Lynette Phillips, who had been involuntarily held in a mental hospital after her nurse exaggerated the severity of her condition, had her and her husband's firearms removed forcibly from their home. Following the passage of the NY Safe Act, New York residents began receiving letters telling them to turn in their firearms and permits as well. One legal gun owner had his firearms taken after a provision in the law allowed his medical records, which detailed his prescriptions, to be shared with authorities. The media and administration's failure to mention these countless abuses, justified through accessing mental health records, paints a clear picture of how these executive orders would be carried out. Masquerading as a mental health fix, the same system that has pushed dangerous prescription drugs for decades is now using it against law-abiding Americans. In an ironic and telling move, a Pennsylvania court recently ruled that a state trooper who was previously hospitalized for depression would not be allowed to own a firearm off-duty. 
Regardless if the officer was in actual danger, the court ruled that due to his likely mental illness, he would only be allowed to carry a firearm on duty, showing how government is not subjected to the same rules as citizens. Early last year, President Obama proposed 23 executive actions on gun control as well, pushing health care providers to ask their patients whether they own firearms. Given that law-abiding gun owners are already being targeted over trivial medical conditions, the proposals would only increase their occurrence. Despite gun homicides seeing a 49% drop since 1993, the establishment has continued to ignore facts with its attempt to push gun control. The same Justice Department willing to give guns to drug cartels, in order to justify gun control through Fast and Furious is now attempting to lecture the public on gun safety, unsurprising given Attorney General Eric Holder's comments, on brainwashing the public to be anti-gun. With the attack on the Second Amendment already beginning this new year, will 2014 be the year of gun confiscation or the year of revival?